What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again, and welcome to another video. While I was out at DreamHack 2018, thanks to Antec, huge thanks to them for sponsoring the trip, of course. Uh, it was pretty interesting. I ran into a group of Red Hat employees that were promoting gaming on Linux. So there's a big interview. You guys have probably seen my how-to on getting Proton working. A lot of it has to do with that great breakthrough uh, with Steam and Proton and just making it more accessible to game on Linux and a whole bunch of Windows, of course, games starting to function on there. The audio is a little rough, so I apologize for that. I want to give a huge shout out to the technical account manager, Skip, who uh, was kind enough to do this interview with us and his insights, as well as Deus Kane, and you can check out his YouTube, another YouTuber, and you can check out his YouTube channel down in the description below. Thanks for watching and enjoy. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again, and I'm super excited out here at DreamHack 2018 to actually see a presence I've never seen in one of these. And uh, it is Red Hat uh, with Fedora for gaming. And joining us today is going to be Skip, the technical account manager. Does that work? That works. And then you have the other title as well, supervisor. No, no, no. I, I, my name is Skip Wyatt. I'm a senior technical account manager. Uh, I work in the public sector here with Red Hat. Uh, and so I work with government accounts primarily, but I'm here uh, working the floor, and we're, we're super excited to be here uh, talking gaming on Linux. I'm excited about it too. And of course, over here, is the infamous Deus K? Yeah, it works, yeah. There you go. Can I go with that? It works. All right, cool. That's me. So, Call me Kane, it's okay. It's I know, like, I know Kane. But I like Deus K. I think it's an official. Very much so. That's why I'm wearing the, the awesome jacket. So, if you guys haven't checked out my video on how to get Proton working in Steam to easily play games on Linux, I definitely recommend that as some homework, which you can check out up in the corner, as well as checking out some of the other peripheral tutorials that I've done, uh, in particular with Ubuntu. Today we're going to be talking Fedora, you know, uh, because that is Red Hat, right? It, uh, Fedora is our upstream community distribution, so everything that uh, comes from Fedora eventually makes its way down into Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and it's a two-way street, so we make improvements in Realm, and those go right back up because we see it as part of our community. So what changed recently that made Red Hat as a company decide to show up and have a presence at Red Hat 2018? Oh man, what didn't change? Uh, so, uh, we've been looking at some numbers uh, here and there, and one of the numbers that, that really struck us is that 95% of the servers that are running here at DreamHack run on Linux. Uh, some of the other numbers that really struck us were that the, uh, the Valve uh, system server that comes out about every month uh, shows that the number of installs of uh, Steam is growing, right? But also, the number of uh, Linux users that are in that pool are either staying the same month after month uh, or are growing. And if that pool is staying the same by percentage or uh, is growing, that means that the number of installs of Linux in that community is growing. So this is a really good indicator that uh, the community is embracing Linux uh, as a third party or uh, as an alternative operating system. And this really excites us because that community is really what builds uh, builds us as a uh, company. Okay. So, well, and that's the user base change, right? Right. But there's also been some software changes recently as well? Right. right. So, uh, a, about three months ago, uh, Valve released a, uh, a fork of Wine called, uh, which uh, Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator. Uh, it's a compatibility layer that fits between uh, Windows applications and Linux, uh, Linux binaries. And uh, this fork was called Proton. And the great part about Proton is that it is A, supported by a good community member like Valve, and B, it's moving really rapidly. So uh, this fork is moving very rapidly. They're doing uh, code commits really every day, and they're constantly releasing beta uh, updates. So we're seeing compatibility go very, very quickly, and it supports Vulkan inside of it, and that's really the, the 
scale, so it's doing DirectX to Vulkan translation inside that layer, which means that uh, suddenly, and it seems like almost overnight, about 2,900 games in the Steam library, the Windows games, became compatible with Linux. With Linux? Awesome. So the, the question for that next, though, is how much does that translation between Vulkan and DirectX 12 for performance, uh, and that's going to be a concern, I think, for most gamers, most people that are going to be looking into making the shift. I've messed with it a little bit, personally, um, and the, the games that already support OpenGL or Vulkan don't seem to have any hit at all. Um, but there is a slight performance hit. Do you have any numbers on that, like as an average or anything? I don't have solid numbers, and I, you know, it's one of those things that I really wish we did have solid numbers. It, it depends game to game. Do you think it's more of a CPU issue or a GPU issue? Because I, I don't know how that translation works. So we haven't seen it as really being a CPU or a GPU issue. What it did, what we have seen is that there is a graphics cache that has to be built up in a couple of different games. And so. Uh, we'll take Overwatch as an example. Okay. Right? You can launch Overwatch inside of, uh, of Proton. Uh, you can use the uh, emulation layer in there to get, get the launch. Um, and uh, for the first few minutes, uh, or if you start a match, um, you probably want to start a match, like a local match if you can, uh, because it's going to build a graphics cache. And it's going to uh, cache some of the graphics locally every time you launch the game. This is being worked on. Okay. So the performance starts off a little stuttery, and then it runs pretty much butter smooth. So the, the thing that we did see on our higher end system is that we were getting really great frame rates. We were getting you know, 120 frames a second uh, pretty consistently uh, until things got uh, really crazy. And mind you, we're running Overwatch on Ultra. System, but we would get dips down to about 65 frames a second, and it wasn't like jarringly stuttering. We did it. So, okay. And this was a. Uh, I didn't know Overwatch you could do. So yeah. that launches through Battle.net, right? It launches through Battle.net, and there's a compatibility layer. Uh, there's an additional set of tools that you can install called Lutris. Okay. And uh, Lutris adds community based runners. So again, this comes back to the community. Uh, right. The, the, Every time the community makes improvements, the rest of the community reaps the benefits. So uh, Lutris is a uh, game and application running manager. It's built. It's uh, L -T -R -I -S. Is that a TRS. And what is that? What portion of the game does that help with as uh, far as compatibility? So it helps with uh, getting the compatibility layers installed to help uh, both BattleNet uh, launch and also get Overwatch to run. So uh, you need um, you need DXVK. Uh, right, so it okay. manages the installation of DXVK. And then the other thing that it does is it installs the correct line binaries for that to run. And it can do it in a number of different ways. It can either do it uh, using Flatpak, which is a, a desktop containerization uh, layer, uh, or you can do it uh, just using the standard RPM package or tarball. So I, in my experience, my biggest issue was with any of the games that had any anti-cheat software. So things like PUBG won't run, um, and so on. Those are some really large titles, of course, because of the competitive nature. Do you think that that's one of the biggest hurdles? And do you know if that's being uh, addressed by anybody at the time? Or? So we've had some really good conversations with people uh, who are associated with some of these different games. None, none of this is an official, you know, like we're not talking to managers or anything like that, but some people have come by and they've played some of the games uh, that we have gotten running and they've been like, well, how did you get around the anti cheat So the community asked and developers went, that sounds right. You know, do we have to support the game? So, no, no, the community says you don't, we don't need you to support the game. We'll support getting the game to run. We just need you to not ban us if you were running Linux. We need you to ignore the fact that we're running Linux, so anti-cheat doesn't you know, ban us or kick us out or prevent the game run. So I think if the community as a whole says, look, we're here, we want to run games on Linux, and they go to uh, they go to developers' forums and say, look, 
we want to run this on Linux. We don't care if uh, we don't care if you support us if you're running it on Linux. We just don't want EIG to ban us. We don't want EIG to ban us. We don't want to ban us. Right. right. Yeah. We don't want to ban or we'll support it. Yeah. Uh, or we don't want the game to immediately uh, crash dump whenever we start it because of anti cheat. We'll support the rest of it. We'll support the compatibility layer. We're going to work it. Um, and I think if you go, if, if people are going to post that on microvalves uh, forums inside of Steam, or if you post it to the uh, developers forums, I think that there's a really good chance. This is a community. Developers need that community to keep playing games. Like I said, the Linux community is growing. Yeah. So, yeah, we're I growing. It is. I, I keep chuckling when you're talking about the Linux community growing. Is I, I've been using Linux since 94. So when I, I talk about like I'm talking about Red Hat and Fedora, I'm like, wow. I remember when Red Hat was just Red Hat, and then Fedora came out. I'm like, oh, this is cool. My machine, machine I had at the time wasn't able to run Fedora because it was a little bit of a, a slug at the time. But I mean, we're talking about how far we've come over the last 20 years, and you're here, Dreamhack, making leaps and bounds and strides over all of this. And a year ago, this wouldn't have been a conversation that we were having. Right, because of uh, because of Steam, the way uh, the way that what they're you know what they're trying to contribute to things. So I have a question in regard to. I remember when Steam first came out on Linux, they were like, "We're supporting Ubuntu." Yeah, and I don't mean to drop the other distrust. No, it's fine. They're, you know, they're great community members. Absolutely, uh, and they've been working really well with a lot of stuff. But have you? I haven't looked at it in the last month or so. And have you guys had any issues with the uh, the install of Steam on Fedora and? When I, when I post things and I talk to uh, you know my audience and they're like, oh, what do you do to mitigate this or this issue? Or my favorite one is they're like, you know, Nvidia. And I'm like, well, Nvidia needs to you know get on board with this. And let's help us out moving forward. Right. I'm gonna call them out. But uh, <laughs> and you, and you, know, and you, you talk about your high-end gaming system. And I know oh. I saw you guys running you know Vega chips in there because they have more. Compatibility. What drivers are you running with the Vega stuff? Oh, oh, there are. There are four questions in there, so we'll, we'll yeah, start, we'll start, with, the, we'll start with the Steam. Way. We'll start with yeah. the Steam one. We'll come back to the AMD one. Right. So uh, the Steam one's pretty cool. So uh, as far as the Ubuntu compatibility and things like that, or because it was on Ubuntu first and then came back, the the Steam machines that were created uh, were actually created off of Debian, uh, which is uh, Debian is a fantastic distribution yes. and it's it's very community built and uh, they have been amazing citizens of the open source community for years and years and years. And they do great work. And with the Steam machines being based off of Debian, it gave them a really great uh, jumping off point to be able to do a lot of things for repackaging. Um, that includes being able to take a lot of these packages and be able to get them into a good packageable format. The, to be honest, the brunt of the packaging um, that has been done to get um, to get Steam running well with graphics drivers on almost every platform was actually done um, by Ike from the Solus Project, uh, and he did a fantastic job in getting that running. Uh, he actually worked with Valve, so I'm going to shout out to Ike, and I don't know if he is going to listen to this or uh, watch this. Uh, you, sir, you, you rock. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because he, he basically single-handedly took them on. He, for a long time, was a single-handed runner of that project. He didn't able to pick that uh, project up and ensure that Steam worked and package it correctly and make sure it did work. And a lot of the groundwork that he put into that ensured that Steam and graphics drivers for his project worked. And then he published that. Um, he published and contributed back to the community. And this comes back to the community. That then laid the groundwork for bringing a lot of the things in. Installing Steam now in Fedora is as easy as enabling uh, the RPM Fusion repo and doing you know, install Steam. Or you know, uh, another way of doing it, if you don't want to have 32-bit um, libraries in your system, is you can go to FlatHub and install the Flatpak from FlatHub. And that way you can be containerized application version of it which comes with and will automatically install the 32-bit libraries but does not have to maintain them through uh, DNF 
it does not have to have the RPM package for those on there. It's all contained inside those containers. Um, on to the AMD driver question. Yes. So the AMD driver question, this is a good one. AMD decided to become good citizens. Uh, they had um, they had a driver that was uh, FLGRX a couple of years ago, and this is reaching back into memory, so I'm hoping you'll name that, but I think it is FLGRX. Um, and that driver was good but difficult to get working, and it did not support every card that they had. And so installing it, depending on which kernel release you had and which specific distro you had, was difficult and repackaging was hard, and everybody got frustrated. Oh, yeah. So um, a decision was made that they should open source their driver, and they did. And they, they open source their driver, they open source everything around their driver. And they came to, uh, they actually came to the Linux mailing list and said, hey, you know, we, we've got to commit. It's a huge commit. I mean, you look at the, the number of lines of code that they committed to the Linux kernel, and you just go, whoa, because <laughs> it's, it's a giant commit as far as uh, complexity. And that, um, they, they were actually told we're not merging their commit. Um, you, you have some cleanup to do for it's going to work the way it needs to work. And they were good citizens. And they said, okay, how do we fix this? And they worked with the community, they worked with the kernel community to fix those problems. And then the, they, there was a give and take in all of that to get things better. But they also developed Vulkan and gave that to the community and said, here is a standard for how we can talk to Bell. Um, and here's how we can get around doing all this other stuff. And you know, OpenGL is great, but we can talk directly to the metal here in Vulcan. Um, and it's been it's been pretty incredible since they did that. So that 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 is how yeah. AMD drivers work. They're in the kernel. They're baked in. They're baked in. Yeah. And the NVIDIA issue is going to be NVIDIA needing to be a good community member. Yeah. And they are getting better. Uh, the in in Fedora, the uh, driver. It, it, so if you're if you're running Fedora, if you're, um, I would say if you're running Red Hat Enterprise Linux as well, this is coming from the technical account management side. I would say maybe look at RPM Fusion to do some of this stuff as well. But uh, there's uh, there are two repos that provide the, the driver there. Uh, one's RPM Fusion, one is Negativo 17. Um, I believe the Negativo driver is pushing on RPM Fusion, but that driver, uh, if you have a NVIDIA card and you install um, and you install Fedora, Fedora will detect it in the software and say, it will detect your card and say, I see that you're running an NVIDIA card, would you like to enable third party repos? Would you like to install the NVIDIA card? So it's all within the install process? Right? Uh, it is post install in the software. So also it was post installed before. Now last time I did a video card with the boot too, of course I had I didn't even get it was I had to basically go with the terminal before even getting into the desktop and going and install the driver. So and what, nice. what we've done is a lot my I say we, but what the community has done is they've repackaged that NVIDIA driver. So they took the installer, cut a bunch of the installer stuff out of it that wasn't needed to run, and then they wrote, um, Fedora uses a hook um, post install to, to build drivers with Draycut, and it runs Draycut post uh, package install to ensure that the kernel modules are compiled correctly for new kernel versions. So if you update the kernel and you haven't updated, there wasn't a new package provision of the NVIDIA drivers, it builds the new, uh, it builds those drivers for the kernel version. And it makes sure, because it's a meta pack, it's not a meta package, it's a, it's an RPM that provides all of the dependencies and everything like that. It knows, hey, I'm installing this, but since we have to compile a package, I need a K-Mod, I need the kernel headers, and a couple other things. And make sure that all of that stuff gets installed, so it's really no fuss with us. Uh, and it works pretty well. There's some exceptions. It right? runs an exception every now and then. For most people, it works really well. Um, a gentleman here uh, had a 10-ATI uh, 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 loaded for 29 this morning. And the brand new drivers were already repackaged uh, this morning. Uh, 
uh, and he did a DNF update, and it picked up the new drivers, and he rebooted the new drivers from there. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. So I guess my last question that I have is, if someone does run into one of those exceptions, where would they want to go to ask for assistance regarding running Fedora 29? And like, oh, I got a Fedora TI, or I've got one of the new RTX cards, and they're like, oh. RTX cards are cool. <laughs> Do the 2080s work yet? I don't know. That's, that's I the think they do. Um, I have an RTX 2080 via USB stick. Should we try? We've got some in the BYOC. Should we try? I have one in my pocket. Actually. Maybe we should try that. Maybe we should try it. So if you're looking for help uh, and you're running a, a problem, you have to have a problem. Uh, there's the uh, Fedora forums online, and those are uh, pure questions and things like that. But a lot of times, the people who may answer your question may actually be a Red Hatter. Uh, it also may be uh, a Fedora project member, uh, or people who are just users. The questions are really pretty good on official forums. Um, the Fedora project wiki is also really good because it provides you the official uh, answers that are collected from the community of, you should do it this way, you should do it this way, you should do it this way. Graphics drivers, especially if you're using the NVIDIA uh, drivers, the RPM Fusion uh, repos website has the entire instructions for here's how to install the NVIDIA drivers. Also, if you're using Optimus uh, graphics or switchable graphics, it has all the instructions on how the uh, Optimus graphics stack works and how to make it work with Optimus so you can switchable graphics on that. So, uh, my work think pad, I run Fedora 29, my work think pad here at Red Hat, and it works great. Uh, I have special graphics. Uh, I'm using the open source track, I use Nouveau, uh, but it's entirely possible to use special graphics uh, with the uh, NVIDIA project. That's good to know. That's actually one of the reasons why my, my laptop, I've got a big old, it's an old Dragon Edition MSI. And the issue I've always had with it is it does have Optimus, it's got an old 680M. Work. I tried installing, uh, I think I was trying to install Debian to work right, I think he was trying to do I tried like three or four distros, and I couldn't get any of that to work quite right, but that was a few years back, yeah. so the fact that it's come, well, I say I say we, because I, I can speak from a perspective <laughs> that I am a member of that community, that yeah. I, I have been contributing and, and, and working with this for years, like I said, I've seen it come a long way, and it's really awesome, but that, that's good to know that the Optimus is working, because that was one of the other questions. Work on my laptop now. <laughs> I don't have really anything else other than uh, why? Why did you guys even decide to come out here? Like it's super exciting, uh, but it's all, as far as I understand it, just in one y'all's own time almost, pretty much. It was something you guys wanted to come out and do. So. We're sitting down having a conversation, right? Right. And a lot of that is having conversations here. There are people here who have used Linux before or have been in that community. I'm saying community a lot because it's important. Right. It's a community of gamers, uh, a community of users. And when communities meet, I think magical things happen, right? And so um, I, I think I said it before. 95% of the machines here are running some form of Linux on the server side to, to run these games. I can vouch for that. I'm part of the network team here, yeah. so I totally say yes, we do. Yeah. A lot of Linux here. So, um, A, uh, why? If, if the servers can do it, the servers are capable of doing this thing, and, and, and you, know, you run your critical infrastructure on top of all of this stuff. And we've proven for 25 years that you can run critical infrastructure on top of Linux, and it works, and it's reliable, and it's exciting when new features come out. But one of the best things that you can say in the enterprise world is, it works. Does it work well? Yeah. How's that feature? It's boring, but we like it. Why? Because it works. And we don't we don't worry about it at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was an ops guy, so I told him, yeah. So, uh, the other thing that I would love to have in a conversation is, well, why do you run your games on Linux? Because they work, and they work well. So why are we not having those conversations more often? And it's because we're just now, 25 years later, have, beginning to have these conversations where Linux is a first class, beginning to be a first class citizen as a platform for gaming. And we're seeing that community grow. So that's why we're here. 
and these the conversations we've been having with people have been great. Um, and if I can divert to a small uh, yeah. to a little story, um, a um, so uh, one of the one of the attendees came up to me, and that attendee uh, was a student, and that student uh, is studying uh, infosec in the middle school program. And first off, if you're doing infosec in a middle school program, it's really awesome. First off, but they were using um, they were using Ubuntu, and uh, that's awesome as well. And, and for somebody who is, you know, I think it's twelve, uh, to be using Ubuntu and have it on your machines, that's awesome. But they said that they were having problems with games from that was one of the things that they had wanted to do was to use it for school and for home. And I was amazed that we were able to show off the floor systems running games with no problems and like that. And uh, we gave uh, the student a flash drive and uh, they brought their machine over and loaded the floor 29 up and, and they were super happy about that. But that's the kind of connections that we're making is that that frustration went away. And we also had somebody Student, and they have a, uh, they're, they're doing the same thing. All of their servers run on Linux, but all of their gaming stations are running on Windows. So if they're running on Windows, they were making the argument of why don't we just build out some gaming machines on Linux and say, why don't we and things like that? So, well, nothing runs on it. Well, we got Warframe, which is one of our preferred games. You got Warframe running? Yeah. I got banned from Warframe, so. And it was for just running uh, Wireshark in the background. I left it out there running. Yeah, they had me for Warframe. I took a month, almost two months to get up there. I had to go through the whole process. And I thought their anti cheat for sure wouldn't work. So that's impressive. Yeah. DSVK uh, runs just fine. There's a Lutra Sloter that picks it up and runs right here. So I can play Fortuna right now. Yep. Um, it, it's not a complicated installation. Um, it, it's, and it's not super involved, but you have to go through Lutris to get it up and running. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was awesome, and it ran really, really well. Like, I was really surprised at how well it run, uh, ran because of the, the amount of, like I say the amount of steps, but it was kind of like tuning the Windows box to get something like that. Like, I forgot how gorgeous that game And it's really light. That game yeah. is amazing. I haven't dove into Fortuna yet, um, but I, I easily have three or four hundred hours of that game. So, th those are my, my two stories from this. It, it's been fantastic, and uh, we've really been enjoying our time here at, at DreamHack. Thanks. I might go try uh, on my RTX 2080 this weekend, or when I get home, I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for the conversation and all that, for being here. Mostly for being here. Really, <laughs> honestly. That's pretty cool. Thanks to Dan Tech for having me out here. Thanks to uh, Kane for visiting us, and Skip. And we will put all relevant links down below, including links to, well, not a good guy, I guess, for Andy Fedora down there now. Huh? This, this, seeing you guys here has actually made me stop and rethink yeah. my, my I, I run a lot of server choice. stuff and, I, and I, I usually shy away from Fedora from running server stuff. I, I'll, I'll run SendOS for a while and then it kind of fell behind and it seems to have caught up recently. Oh yeah, Fedora uh, Cloud Infrastructure Tree. Absolutely, and I, and I actually got downloaded a copy of uh, Red Hat Workstation. I want to poke and test today because it's, for my personal use, Rel has always been at just out of reach because of you know, the circumstances of how, it, how it's uh, presented to the community. Sure. Uh, so is, is, there, is it a Fedora? Uh, is there a Fedora server? Yes. So Fedora server is oh, available. This. <laughs> like I know I'm like I'm like wait a minute I'm like I, I gotta end this but I'm like this is the, these are the questions that I have and I get these all the time. Yeah, sure. So Fedora server is available. Uh, there's three different main versions. So there's uh, Fedora Atomic, uh, Fedora server, and then there's Fedora Atomic and Fedora Cloud. There's Fedora Cloud, uh, Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, and uh, so my server at home is Fedora Server. Uh, both my laptops are Fedora uh, Workstation, and then uh, I've got a couple of VMs that are running some cloud scaling cloud infrastructure that are uh, Fedora Cloud, and uh, I do some so all my commits are on the works back and things like that. So, so 
workstation is different than just an R29. Or is it? Is it? it it's R29. It's package set. So whenever we look at package set, uh, the repositories are just slightly different than you define what you want to um, put out there. So the four workstation packages are in our own repo, and it's defined as a product inside of that. Well, this actually made me want to. I've got, I've got the USB drive. Like, I've got a machine that I'm like, was ready to put Windows on. I got the camera cover. I didn't get the USB drive. Oh, you, get, you get a BYFC, like which one? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's good. Oh, they got it. Oh, yeah, they do. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Sounds good. See you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.